Now when you click on a database over on the left like we had, you usually get this first screen here where you can add a table from here. If you don't see this, you can go ahead and click on create a table over on the left. So let's go ahead and create our first table, which we called nav. Next it's going to want to know how many columns we need. So let's go over here and take a look. One, two, we have six. So we're going to need six columns. Now this number can be changed later if you need to. But it's good to have a general idea of what you're doing before you start. So six, we're going to hit go. And it comes up with this screen for us to enter in the information for the table. So our first column is going to be ID. And I'm going to go ahead and just list out the column names here first so we can get that information in so we don't have to keep flipping back and forth from here. So we have ID, label, URL, so label, URL, target, position, and status. So target, position, and status. Now we don't actually need to do things in every one of these columns here at the top. However, some of these are required. So for ID, we need to decide what kind of data type this is. And we're going to have an ID that's going to be a number and it's going to auto increment, which means whenever a new record is put in the database, it's going to go ahead and automatically add plus one to the last number in the database. So if the last ID that was put in was five, then the next time you put a record in, it's going to give an ID of six. And we're just going to go ahead and use the integer type. And when using the integer type, we're going to need to tell it how long this integer is going to be. So I'm not thinking our navigation is going to have any more than 10 items in it. So we can have a length of two. So that basically allows us to have up to 99 items. For default, we're going to leave this empty. And in fact, we're going to leave all these empty until we get over here to index. Now I had mentioned that this ID is our primary key, so we need to tell MySQL that's what we want. So this is going to be the primary key, and this AI here is for auto increment. We're going to want this to auto increment. And that's what tells it to add that plus one every time a new record is entered. Now let's go through these other columns here. So we have our label here, and this is going to be text. And to have just general text in a database, we're going to want to choose varchar. And I don't see our labels being any more than 150 characters, so let's just go with that. For this particular column, label, we don't need to add any more options here. So let's move on to URL. URL, just like label, is going to need to be a varchar. Which basically, a varchar allows you to have pretty much any character or symbol inserted in here. And for the URL, let's just go ahead and make it 200, even though I'm pretty sure we're not going to have anything put in there. Most of these are going to be page names, which are going to be pretty small. So we can leave that as that. With target, same thing, it's going to be text. So varchar, and this doesn't need to be any more than 20 characters, uh, probably maybe less. Now position, this is going to be an integer as well. And since I don't see any, and since we're not allowing for any more than 99 items to be added in, our position really doesn't need to be any bigger than 99, so a length of two numbers will work for that. Um, for this one, we're going to go ahead and put in a default. So we're going to choose as defined, and then down here in this box, we're going to define what that default is. And we'll just say default is going to be 1. And that is really just in case you did not enter in a position when you created the record, it's going to go ahead and put a 1 in there. And this really just saves you from getting errors. Lastly, we have status. And for status, I'm envisioning this is going to be either a 0 or a 1, whether it's going to be on or off. So we're going to need an integer, and we just need 1. And for the default, let's just go ahead and define this as 1, which means every record we put in, if we don't change the status, it's automatically going to make it a 1, which means enabled. 
And to be clear, we're going to be the ones who decide that one means enabled. The one to the database doesn't really mean anything. So we go down here and we go ahead and save this. And there you go. Congratulations, you've created your first table. Now let's come back over here really quick and we're going to create our second table. Now I actually don't like this screen when you click create table. Uh, I prefer to be able to put in the column count. So if we go ahead and just come back up here to click on example, our table name, we'll get this screen again. So let's go ahead and put in our second table, which is videos. And flip over here, and we have five columns. Click on go. And we can kind of go through this one a little quicker. We have our ID, our YouTube ID, our label position and status. We're going to fill this out pretty similar to the way we did the other one. So integer for the ID. We're not going to add any more than 99 videos in here, so two will work for the length. Index for this is going to be the primary key of this table, and we do want this to auto increment as well. YouTube ID is going to be a little different though. YouTube IDs have a mismatch of characters. It's not just numeric. So we're going to want this to be a var car. And off the top of my head, I don't know what the standard amount of characters are, so we'll just be safe and say 50. Now for the label, we've already done this in the other table. We'll do var car, and we'll just go ahead and do 200 characters. For position, we'll follow suit, and we'll just do integer and length of 2. Status, we'll do integer length of 1, as defined one and let's go ahead and define the default for position as well so as defined and one go ahead and save and there you go we have our two tables here on the left nav and videos and if you click on each one of these it'll show you first the structure now once we've actually inserted some data in these tables the default screen will be the browse screen where you can take a look at a list of all the data